Hey everybody, and welcome back to another how-to video. Today we're going to take a look at olives and how to become an olive farmer here on Farming Simulator 22. So I'm over on the French map, and I thought it would be appropriate to make olives over here on the French map. And what we see in front of us is basically a collection of everything we're going to need to use to be an olive farmer here in Farm Sim. And how do I know what to get? Well, thankfully, one of the best new features of Farm Sim 22 in the shop is packs. So let's take a look. So I went to packs, went to olives, and here it's going to list basically everything you need to get started in olive farming. We've got the Landini. We've got the Broad 9090X Olive. The Mercury 4000L Sprayer. The TMC Concilia TPN 140 Mulcher. We need a trailer. The Disco Vigni... Yeah, okay. The Agrisim Subsoiler. $5,000. So, in total, excluding the trailer, we've spent a total of $383,000 for what you see here, excluding the Walger trailer and the Steyr. Those are both starting equipment here on the game save. But everything else that you see here is $383,000. Now we have all of the machinery that we're gonna need in order to be an olive farmer. What else do we need? Well, we need some olive groves. And I don't really see any olive groves around here. So we're gonna to have to do something about that. So to put olive groves in, we don't actually plant olive groves. We place olive groves. And we use, do that using the build mode. And it can be a little bit sketchy. It's gonna take practice for sure. So let's go into build mode, shift P. And in build mode, we wanna to go to production, orchards, and then we have olives. $130, I guess, per olive tree is what we're looking at here. What we're going to do is we're going to click and drag our olives. And this is where it gets a little, a little sketchy. Is it's hard to keep the rows straight. Given the, given the view that we have, it's hard to keep the rows straight. I really wish we had up here some angle specification so that we could keep it at 90 degrees. And I'm just going to make some pretty long rows. $17,550 for this big long row of olive trees. So I'll put that down. And now you can see it's it's basically allowing me to to do this. I'm going to right click and I'm going to put in another row down. I want to go too far away, but also don't want to be too close. So we're going to go right about here, I think. And we're going to go back down and we're going to do about the same. Place it. And I'm going to put down another two rows. Like I said, this takes some practice. Since there is no undo, you may want to save after every olive row placement just so that you're satisfied with what you've got. And now we have four long rows of olive trees. And they're listed as growing. And that costs us a fair bit of money in order to put those down. Now you can put these down anywhere. You can put them on fields. I put them on a field here, just convenient for this particular video. But you can put them anywhere you want. I mean, if you wanted to put a row right down here, you could. So once we have planted our olives, we need to think about what do we need to do in order to care for our olives. Well, olives are going to require mulching of the grass between the rows. It's gonna require us to subsoil between the rows, and it's gonna require us to apply fertilizer between the rows. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to advance time a little bit. Let the grass grow here in between the trees so we have something to mulch. So I'll see you back in a day or two. Well, good morning. We're back and we've got grass. So now we're ready to mulch. And if we take a look at our crops screen, we can see we've got growing indicating here on the field where we have our olive groves. And there we have olives showing right there. So we're gonna get our great landini and we're gonna use our mulcher to mulch between the olives. So there's a pair of special tractors. We've got the landini or if you're more inclined to use something green, there is a little narrow fent tractor that you could also elect to use. Let's take a look at that. Under small tractors. We have the Fent 200 V Vario. Basically, we have two tractors that are really intended for orchard use. We also have the methane powered New Holland that I, I suppose you could th theoretically also use for orchards and olive groves. Now you can see why you need these little narrow tractors because there isn't a lot of space really ideally between these. Lower it down, I'll turn it on. And it is basically mowing the grass, if you will, mulching the grass between the rows. Let's we'll see what this looks like from the in cab view. And I'm just going to go ahead and continue this process up and down all four rows and I'll be back with you in a little bit. Now that we're done mulching between the rows, we're going to want to connect to our subsoiler. Just as a frame of reference, we're still in the same game day. And we'll drop it on down and subsoil up. And you can see that we are getting a different type of subsoiled texture here than what we would typically see on a field when we're subsoiling. We're still getting grass left behind. So let's jump out and it looks like I'm stuck. So let's not jump out. We'll jump out at the end. It won't take too long to get down there. You can basically see what we're doing here. We're subsoiling between the rows it's still leaving a bit of grass there between the rows. And what I actually did is when I did the mulching, I actually went through and kind of hugged the trees, the olive trees, fairly close in order to mulch the grasses as best I could. But you can see what we're getting here. So that is the subsoiled look. That is the mulched look up and down the rows. So once again, I'm just going to continue to mulch on either side of all of these rows. Then I'll be back. So an interesting point I want to show here. I was not able to hire a helper with the mulcher, but I am able to hire a helper here with the subsoiling. Now, helpers appear to only work the row you're in they do not appear to be overly bothered with you know figuring out what next row to accomplish 
but I was able to hire a helper at least to make one pass. There we go. Now we are once again hired a helper. So you can use a helper to subsoil. It doesn't appear that you can use a helper to mulch and you basically need to reposition and hire the helper again on every pass that you're going to make down your olive grove. Now that we have completed our subsoiling passes, we're going to fertilize between our olives and we've got the Mercury 4000L for that. We've got just a, a standard palette of liquid fertilizer. We're gonna, once again, run between our rows. We're gonna start. And this sprayer is pretty cool because it basically atomizes, if you will, the liquid fertilizer, which means that you go through fertilizer very, very slowly. I would say a full trailer of liquid fertilizer in this thing would probably last you a fairly long time and go a fairly fairly far way in getting everything fertilized so one test that i want to do is here at the end of the row i want to circle back but i want to come up this other row because in essence we've already hit the two rows of trees and now we can basically fertilize these trees and that sprayer that's a really cool sprayer really interesting animation on that let's see if we can hire a helper to do that job no it doesn't look like we can so we're gonna have to do that job manually also It's a new day, so, so far we are into our third day. So we planted when the HUD said August. We did all of our field work when the HUD said September, and now it is a new day. And if we take a look here at our menu, you can see that we have fertilized everything. And we can see that it is, I guess, now in the second stage of growth. It's kind of hard to tell. I think it's now moved into the second stage of growth. So since there really isn't anything else to do, see you tomorrow. Welcome back to another new day. You can see our HUDs changed to November. So again, we had August, September, October, November. So we are in our fourth day of play here as an olive farmer. And, well, everything is still growing. We could go ahead and fertilize, and I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do here. Because you can see, we're still growing. We have moved one more growth stage. And if we go to our fertilizing screen, let's go ahead and attach to our sprayer. And make a run down the field and see if we get a color change on the HUD. Let's get things lined up here. And then we'll just check. And we are indeed getting another application rate of fertilizer here on our olives. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this task out and then we'll advance another day and we'll come back and we'll see where we are and on the dawn of the fifth day the olives were ready so we can now jump in our harvester and reap the rewards of the last five days worth of work
So this harvester is a bit of a uh, something that's going to take a bit of getting used to, for sure, because the way you need to harvest these olives is you need to run the machine right down the middle of them. We're going to unfold the harvester. It's going to raise on up. It's a really interesting design, the way it's been set up. The front wheels will raise and lower to kind of keep the whole machine level. We'll turn it on. And if you see inside there, the way this works is ultimately the harvester kind of shakes the trees and in essence shakes the olives off the trees. So there we go. You see the olives kind of being gathered up and collected, dumped into the sides there. Like I said, it's, it's a little, it takes a little bit getting used to. I personally have kind of found that uh, running the machine from in front and looking back towards it is kind of, in my opinion, the best way and the easiest way to harvest. Now, I know some people like to do the first person perspective and you kind of just need to, I guess, line the, the steering wheel with the middle of the row. just like that so we have 745 liters of olives off of that row got three more rows to do so let me go ahead and finish getting these olives harvested and I'll be back with you with what the next step of the process is so in all from our four rows of olives we've got just a shade under 3,000 liters of olives 2,981 so we're going to back this up to the trailer we're going to hit I to unload and there they go. And now that we have our olives, we have a choice to make. Do we sell the olives as is, or do we further process them into oil at the oil mill? And some of that is gonna basically depend on if you own the oil mill or not. Interestingly enough, on this map, on the French map, the oil mill doesn't exist pre-placed. So you would have to buy the oil mill and place it yourself. Now that investment is something to really not, you know, take lightly because the oil mill is going to cost you $80,000. So you got to think, well, how long is it going to take for me to, to pay off that investment? How serious am I? of an olive farmer let's take a look at our prices so olive oil it takes 100 units of olives to make 50 units of oil so in essence half so we have just under 3,000 liters so we're going to get just under 1500 units of olive oil from our harvest so if you go to our prices and we look at olive oil we're going to get $7,312 at the farm shop per 1,000 liters of olive oil. So we've got about 1,500 liters. So we can expect to get over $10,000 from this harvest's worth of olive oil. Now, if we take a look at what olives themselves are going to bring us, the best price is $2,100. And we have 1,500 liters. So we're going to get about $3,200 if we sell the olives at the best sell point, which is off the tracks. We're going to have to rent the train to get that price. And the train itself is going to cost us $1,000. That right there is telling me 
that I'm going to make olive oil with my olives, hands down. It's going to take me eight harvests at this quantity to pay back, in essence, the oil mill. But if I was really deeply invested in olives, I would probably have far more olive grove rows than I do right now for this demonstration. Let's go ahead and dump the olives in here. And then I'm just going to go over here to the mill and interact with it. I could interact with it from the prices or from the escape screen also. Our olives we're going to activate. And once we've activated, now we have a choice. We can store the olives. Basically, they're going to output as pallets. And then we're going to transport those pallets to the cell point. We could sell the olives or the olive oil, and therefore it's going to just automatically sell the olive oil for me. Or we could distribute it. We really don't have any other place to send it down the line. So I'm just going to hit store it because I want to see that gratification of selling this olive oil here in a bit. So it's going to take a bit of time to process this oil because the production plant says basically it's 100 units for 50, two cycles per hour, and it's going to cost me $2 per hour. So it's going to take a decent amount of time to process through all of this olive oil. Let's go ahead and speed up the clock to 120. And I'll bring you back once we have all of the olive oil bond out here and ready to transport to sell. So in the end, I had to advance an entire day before the olive oil factory had basically processed all of the product. We had one full pallet output, so 1,000 liters. Then there was 477, I think, liters remaining in the factory. I did set that to selling as opposed to storing and it went ahead and sold at the top of the hour. So we're going to go ahead and take this pallet of olive oil over to the sell point. Uh, we're going to go ahead and sell that oil and see what our total take is for our initial olive harvest. quite a quick trip across country to get over here but here we are nonetheless now the tag spot says here at the dump station but I know better I'm gonna need to have to go around the back so olive oil is not accepted there but it is accepted here And if we take a look now at our finances screen, you're going to see that we have earned a total of $8,250 for our little olive harvest. So guys, that is it. That is how to be an olive farmer on Farming Simulator 22. It's up to you to decide if it is worth the time, worth the investment, and, well basically worth the enjoyment of being an olive harvester be sure to subscribe to the channel because we're going to be putting out some other how-to videos in the very near future in fact the next one that we're going to put out is going to be on grape farming here on farming simulator 22 so until next time happy farming